Welcome to Municipal Affairs. As communities across Canada continue to grow and expand, rail safety has become an increasingly important issue for both municipalities and the public. Rail Safety Week, an annual initiative held across the country, plays a vital role in raising awareness about the dangers of railway crossings and the importance of safety near rail tracks. This year, Rail Safety Week is focusing on the shared responsibilities of communities, governments, and the railway companies to keep people safe. Joining us for today's discussion on rail safety and how communities can engage in reducing accidents is Janelle Saskew, spokesperson for the Railway Association of Canada. Janelle will provide insights into how individuals, local authorities, and railway companies can collaborate to enhance safety measures, as well as highlighting ongoing public education efforts. She'll also discuss what railway companies are doing to ensure safety on and around railways and how Rail Safety Week aims to promote life-saving practices. From pedestrians to drivers, schools to municipalities, rail safety is a collective responsibility. And our guest today is here to share important safety tips and updates on how Canada is leading the change in preventing railway accidents. Attention Saskatchewan. This election season, Municipal Affairs is hitting the road in partnership with SUMA for the Saskatchewan Provincial Election. Join us on election night for live coverage straight from Regina on YouTube featuring exclusive insights from municipal leaders and stakeholders across the province. We will be capturing their reaction to the results and be diving into what the new provincial government means for municipalities. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan to hear directly from local leaders about the issues that matter most to you. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan starting September 30th to hear directly from local leaders like yourself about the issues that matter most. This is your election covered like never before. Municipal Affairs, your trusted voice from the grassroots to the government. Janelle, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. As this is Rail Safety Week in Canada from coast to coast to coast, uh, many municipalities have railways that go through them. Many municipalities rely on the rail system. Uh, can you, with your organization, uh, explain what Rail Safety Week means to your organization as the Railway Association of Canada? Sure. Well, the Railway Association of Canada actually represents nearly 60 rail carriers across Canada. People are really surprised to know that there is so many carriers. Um, you know, we think of the big, the big ones, our class one, CN and CP. We also immediately think about via rail, but we don't tend to think about um, the short lines. We don't tend to think about the passenger rails, the smaller passenger rail services. Um, so trains, play such an important role um, within our, our society from coast to coast, uh, delivering goods and, and people all across the country. Um, so one of the important things that goes hand in hand with, with you know, our rail services is rail safety. Um, so this year we are running our 21st Rail Safety Week, which runs from September the 23rd to the 29th. And our theme this year is there is no undo button. And, um, you know, that's, that's just really important when, whenever people think about rail safety or, you know, should we take that risk and try run across the tracks or try drive across the tracks, the train wins almost 100% of the time. Um, so really getting that message across, hey, that bad decision can't be undone. We, as this is the 21st uh, Rail Safety Week in Canada, education com is must be a big priority for yourself, your organization, but also the rail companies as well, and municipalities and communities across this province. Is there any specific initiatives that the Railway Association of Canada is doing this year to work with municipalities to educate residents, kids, school children around the safety that is railways? Absolutely. So um, a division or part of the Railway Association of Canada is Operation Lifesaver. We've actually been in existence for over 40 years and uh, we're actually a North American um, organization that that really promotes rail safety and livability in our communities. So we have 
numerous, numerous rail ambassadors across the country um, who dedicate their time just to promote rail safety within our communities. They go into our, our schools, they go into our community groups, they grow, go into our municipalities. We work closely with all of our elected officials as well to try to pass as much information as we can um, about rail safety and, and what we can do to prevent any type of accidents. In those 21 years, has your organization or even the uh, rail companies themselves seen accidents or incidents involving pedestrians or vehicles increase or decrease over that 21 years? Or so, are you sort of seeing, uh, do you have stats that you can give us? Yeah, so unfortunately, we continue to see an increase. And uh, this is what's really frustrating and really hurtful for us because, like I said, every rail accident is preventable. So over the last five years, more than 100 Canadians have been hurt or killed every year um, in railway crossing or trespasser incidences, and that's just an average. So in 2023, uh, we had 73 Canadians were hurt or killed because they were on the tracks uh, illegally. I mean, that's what it is. It's trespassing. It's illegally. Um, another 32 were hurt or killed at crossing. So again, trying to beat that tra beat the train. Um, so far in our first half of 2024, um, an average of 10 Canadians per month have been seriously hurt or killed at crossings. Um, so that's a 33% increase over the last five years uh, with our historical data. 128 incidences have occurred in the first half of 2024. And um, we're seeing, so that's an 11% increase in crossing accidents and a 57% increase in trespassing. So those, those are scary stats. Another stat, um, we don't have exact numbers on it, um, but we have actually acknowledged that we are seeing an increase of suicide by rail. And, um, you know, that's something that is, is very, very concerning to us. And uh, we're working very closely with our communities to try to educate and, and um, you know, have different types of programs available so that we can help people who are considering suicide by rail. There's some staggering numbers that you just gave there. And I'm going to dive into a few of them if you don't mind. Education for one week is important, but education for those other 51 weeks out of the year is also important. What is the Railway Association doing to ensure that you're not just promoting safety around railways the one week out of the year, but also every other week of the year? And how can Canadians who are listening to this look at the uh, safety numbers that you just gave and say, how can we change this? Is there anything that we can be doing those other 51 days, uh, 51 weeks a year to ensure that we are safe? Yeah. Communicate and educate. That's, that's our biggest thing that we do. So we, just because we highlight um, a lot of these stats this week during Rail Safety Week, we promote and educate and communicate um, all of the safety mitigation measures throughout the entire year. So again, we have numerous ambassadors and staff who will gladly come and share information, send you information, do presentations, attend trade shows, attend events in your communities. Um, we, we will do anything to share the message because there is just nothing sadder than a preventable death. And that's exactly what all of the railway deaths are. They're preventable. Um, so you can go on our, our RAC website or you can go on Operation Lifesaver website and you can request information. Um, our teams are constantly monitoring it. We're dedicated to this. Um, like I said, just because we share the information, um, you know, highlight the information or emphasize it this one week during Rail Safety Week, we promote rail safety 24-7, 365 days a year. This is our commitment to Canadians. So though, for those who are listening or uh, tuning in via YouTube, the links to the RAC website and Operation Lifesaver website will be in the show notes. So if you are looking for more information or if you want to help educate your kids, highly recommend that you check those out. Those numbers are staggering, like I said. Is there particular areas in the country that are of more concern to the Railway Association? Is it more urban? Is it more rural? Is it more uh, just even in it, like just waiting at the railway shipyards? Is there a certain area in Canada that are seeing more 
rates of infractions? Yeah, so, um, you know, statistically speaking, and, and I just pulled up today's numbers, Ontario um, leads the way based on population, that's to be expected. BC and Alberta only have one, one incident difference. So when you think about that population wise, again, I think that that's a lot, uh, that's a flag, that's a concern um, to see that Alberta and BC report the same number of incidences and then followed by Quebec. So, you know, a lot of it really does have to do with um, urbanization. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot more dense populations. We're seeing affordable and attainable housing being built near railways. Um, you know, so that just the more people, the the more um, the more desire there's going to be to take that shortcut or you know take that that shortcut on the way home or to school or see if you can beat that that train because you really get angry at having to stop there for five minutes. And, um, you know, it, it's just staggering. So I pulled up Alberta's just because I'm situated here in Alberta. Over the last 10 years, we've had 438 crossing and trespassing incidences, equating to 99 deaths and 85 serious injuries. That's a lot of people's lives that have been affected. You, you talk about the weight and I, I've lived in Lloyd Minster where you have a railway that comes or a train that comes through and it cuts off the north and south parts of the, of the city. I've lived in rural communities where you have to wait to get in because it's only accessible by one road and you have to wait for the train to go by. There are, and I've seen this and I've seen this on my travels throughout Canada where people see the flashing lights and they don't stop and they just continue on because they don't see a tra uh, train. And so they just continue on. How do we get it through people's minds that those flashing lights means you need to stop? Because not all crossways have the arms that come down because some rural communities just don't have them. How do we get more and more people to understand that when you see flashing lights, it's not a, a, a yield sign, it's a stop sign, basically. So one of the things that I'm so passionate about, and, and it's it's a little bit of a, a pet peeve of mine is, you know, constantly we get complaints about um, the whistles, we get complaints about um, lights and, you know, like I said, delays and everything. We don't view our warning signals lights and whistles, the same way we view our emergency responders, our police and ambulance. Nobody would ever, you know, hear a siren from a police or a fire truck or anything and say, hey, I'm just going to speed ahead. You pull aside. Those lights and sirens are notifying the public that we need to get through quickly. And that's exactly what the, what our trains do. And yet there's this different mindset. And, and I just honestly, Chris, I don't understand why people view it differently. And so, you know, it's going to take continuous education. It's going to take educating, you know, starting at a young age, educating our kids. And, and like I said, it, it's, this is nothing that is a joke. You don't get a second chance. And so, you know, what is it going to take? And unfortunately, in most communities, it takes a tragedy for people to realize this is really serious. I was recently watching a, a documentary on rail safety and preparation for this and I, I just want to know from your standpoint one of the most leading causes that they were talking about and this was out of the state so I'm not sure if it's uh, indicative of here in Canada was when trains are stopped in the middle of an urban center kids and I say this as school kids will often think that this is an opportune time for them to cross the train tracks while the train is in the middle of the road and go underneath the train. What work are you doing with the school systems to ensure that kids aren't crossing this way? Because I, I, I'm hoping that this is not happening in Canada, but I highly it suspect is. That and it unfortunately, is. there was a video that just went viral last week of an adult doing that in Edmonton. And, you know, it's it again, it's we go into the school systems, you know, we we try to provide information. We're trying, you know, at a real young age, you know, we teamed up with Mattel a few years ago and uh, produced some Thomas a Train books, right? And so trying to educate the kids as young as possible so that they know you don't have to be afraid, you have to be aware. 
And, and, you know, that's going to be the most important thing that we do. And again, you know, we, we present to everyone from children to seniors, you know, we had a very unfortunate situation in Steinbeck, Manitoba, this sp uh, spring or summer, a couple finished watching the community parade and thought they'd run across the tracks um, so that they could get home a little quicker. And uh, unfortunately, the lady tripped and fell on the tracks and didn't make it home. So again, it's just, we have to tell people five minutes is going to save your life. Don't make that poor split second decision. We've talked about the urbanization of uh, railway systems and there are setbacks for railways in many municipalities, but I have gone through many municipalities and I see people walking along those setbacks, just walking along because it's a quick way home. How important is it for residents to take a little bit extra time and walk a little bit longer? So if there is a potential derailment, which we hope there isn't, or there is a potential moment where something could go wrong, they trip, they fall and they don't get up. How important is it for that extra five minutes to take and just go the long way? Well, like I said, it, it saves people's lives. And, and, you know, this is where we also have to work really closely with our provinces and our municipalities and developers. So I'm the manager of the Proximity Initiative. We do have a set um, of, of guidelines that were established back in 2003 in conjunction with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities because municipalities were raising concern about safety and livability near rail lines. And, you know, We've kept them as guidelines just because we would never want to impede development in any community. I'm a former mayor. I know how important development is, but we need to, and especially as we're seeing, um, you know, more density, we're seeing conversion of, of uh, a lot of buildings into um, residential uh, and attainable housing. Now we're seeing that higher density of people near the rail lines. And so Number one, it's it's so important to, when you are developing, have a look at the proximity guidelines. See what type of mitigation measures can be introduced in place to keep people safe. We tend to think of derailments. We don't think about the noise and the vibration um, and the emissions. And those are all really important factors. You know, when it comes to, like you said, people walking along the rail lines, again, there's so many factors that people don't consider. It sounds crazy, Chris, but air pressure plays a really important factor into um, hearing the train. The trains are getting quieter as we, we become more advanced in our technology. Um, again, it depends. It, it's, it's, it really is a phenomenon, but it depends on, on wind direction. Uh, like I said, air pressure. You may not feel the vibration. You may not hear the train. And the other thing that we're seeing is actually an increase in the number of people that have their noise canceling headphones on. And, you know, that, that, that's just crazy as well. Why would you want to have the noise canceling headphones on when you can possibly be putting yourself in that position of not being able to hear a train approaching? You, you talked about my favorite subject. And as we are a show that is dedicated to municipalities from coast to coast to coast, I want to talk about the municipalities role in ensuring safety is a priority when it comes to railways. Uh, you talked about some of the initiatives that they can do, but is there a specific action that you look at when you look to municipalities to say, if you really want to take this seriously, municipalities, this is a good first step. What is that first step that municipalities should be doing? Not two guidelines. weeks from now, <laughs> tomorrow. The guidelines. Absolutely. You know, and, and even we're seeing a lot more, um, I'll use an example close close to home here, you know, where we have a rural location that, um, you know, was adjacent to a rail line, um, single farmer living there. Well, fast forward 20 years, that land has been subdivided. There's now about 25 homes that are right adjacent to the rail line. If planning was done properly 20 years ago, um, you know, there would be considerations of having those setbacks. Um, thinking that it can't happen or thinking, well, this is just a short line that, you know, runs through our community twice a month, gets a little busier during harvest season or whatever seasonally. 
Um, no, you have to always be able to consider those mitigations. And we're not saying that you have to implement absolutely every single you know, suggested mitigation, it doesn't make sense to put up a an acoustic wall in rural Alberta. Um, but having that setback, having those setbacks, it saves people's lives, period. Do mayors and Reeves and councillors and directors, and if you're in BC, uh, reach out to the Railway Association on a regular basis to All the time. talk through, or is there resources that mayors and cities and municipalities can deal with? So that way, if they're going through that process of trying to figure out what is the best way forward when we're dealing with uh, housing issues in or near a railway, that they can talk to you and say, what should we do? What's the best path forward? Yeah, so... Um, all of our information is on our website. My personal contact information is on the website. Um, anybody can talk to me at any time and, and we can navigate um, them through the process. We work really closely with our, our uh, rail companies, the owners of the rail lines as well. Um, we're really starting to establish those really strong relationships at the earlier planning stages as well. Because as we know, a lot of times when it comes to um, voting on it or considering it at the municipal council level, you know, there's been a lot of work done already um, through the developers and the planners. So really trying to work closely with the developers and, and the planners so that they can implement some of those safety mitigations as well. We highly encourage municipalities to include the, the proximity guidelines in their land use bylaws. And, you know, it doesn't force anybody to follow every single uh, mitigation uh, suggestion in there, but what it does is it provides um, a guideline so that you can mitigate some of those risks. And that's when just being a responsible, uh, you know, uh, the responsibility of the municipality you know, protecting the, your citizens. I, I'm not, I, I hate doing the hypothetical questions, but I think I have to for a second. Um, when an accident or an incident does occur in a municipality, uh, does your organization come out to the municipality to investigate, to work with the municipality, work with the local law enforcement to ensure, and then do you give best practices of how to ensure that an incident like that doesn't happen again? Or are you sort of a backbencher until someone approaches you? So incidences are always investigated by the rail company and the Transportation Safety Board and Transport Canada. We can obtain that information. And so, you know, through that information, we will identify hot spots um, where we will concentrate our efforts on. Again, um, we're constantly attending um, our Provincial Territory Association conferences. We're always at, at the Federation Canadian Municipalities conferences. Um, we started attending the Canadian Planners conferences. We, we will continue to do so. And, and um, you know, again, it's just all about establishing those lines of communication and educating the importance of this. You, you've you talked about noise cancelling headphones. Larger urban centres right now are seeing more and more uh, vehicles on the road. Uh, we're seeing a more diverse population, whether it be a multilingual nation. We are traditionally a bilingual nation, but we are speaking in many different languages now. Are the railway companies keeping up to the many different languages that people are speaking? Because where I am located right now in Northeast Calgary, it is not a traditionally a predominantly English area. So do rail companies and the Railway Association are they taking steps to improve safety for different uh, diversities, but also more large populations that we see today that they didn't see 20 years ago? Yes, absolutely. So a lot of our information through Operation Lifesaver is actually uh, available in different languages. Um, ooh, I don't have the exact number, but I, I believe we're probably close to about 20 different languages. We know that that's a long ways from, from you know, being able to translate it into every language that, that is needed, but it's a start. And we're always continuing to engage um, with our, our different uh, multicultural uh, communities as well. And it is really important. You know, one, one of the things as a mom that, you know, I think about is our, our young people and, and our new immigrants that come into our country um, who may not be familiar with driving safety, like you said, um, 
it kind of, this is a, a pet peeve of mine. It drives me crazy that when kids take a driver's test, the only thing they ha have to do regarding rail safety is identify the, the X of the railway crossing sign. Um, they're never told what they should be doing. What if it's foggy outside? What do you do? And I know I've had to educate my own kids on that. You stop the car, you enroll the window and you listen, right? And, and I just think that there's so much opportunity that we can do uh, to, to provide better education. One of the cool things that we did do is we've actually partnered with both Waze and with Google Maps. So now when you're on your Google Maps, um, it'll actually show you when you're crossing uh, a railway crossing. It's our hope that, you know, maybe as, as there's an advancement in technology, wouldn't it be amazing if, if it would be able to alert us that there's an actual moving train on the track? You know, that's something that we're hoping we can advance towards one day. Um, but yeah, like I said, there, there's so much that we can do to, to educate our new citizens um, because it, it is, it's critical and it's something different, right? Um, a, a lot of our, our new citizens are, might be used to the really fast commuter trains that, that go through and, and aren't used to our large freight trains that can, you know, be two miles long in some instances. And the other thing is people really underestimate how fast the trains can go. And I think, um, you know, until you're right up against a train, you really don't realize the power and the speed that they have either. What does the future have in store for the Railway Association of Canada when it comes to more education and uh, ad adapting to the ever-changing uh, sort of, I, I don't want to say news gathering because people get their news or their information in different venues. Is the Railway Association reaching out through social media, through online presence, through TikTok? Because we all know that's Absolutely. a big thing right now, even exactly. though I don't know what it means. I but know, it to, no. <laughs> but it, is the Railway Association adapting to the ever-changing landscape of how people gather this educational knowledge that you're trying to Absolutely. So like I said, you know, we work with a variety of, of a multifaceted approach right because we do want to try to to get the message across to everybody so like I said you know we partner with Mattel we have a, a very high social media presence and bless their hearts because like I said I'm not a social media guru by any means but um, you know we have specific ones that you know would pique the interest of young children we have a campaign that you know is targeted towards our teens and our, our young drivers we have another campaign that's you know for the more mature adults so yes no we are we are constantly trying to cover every single facet of everybody because like i said this is this is a a all in approach to rail safety my last question for you before I let you go here, Janelle, and it's an important one because we've talked about a lot of things over the last 25 minutes, but as our show is more dedicated towards municipalities, mayors, reeves, councillors across this country, what's your message to them today that you hope that they take away, go back to their council table and make this a priority to ensure that Rail Safety Week isn't just this week, it's every week in Canada? Well, I think the most important thing is, you know, just constantly communicate with us, um, whether it is, you know, with the individual class ones that are going through your community or the short lines or or the passenger trains, us through the, the Railway Association of Canada, um, you know, again, we can help you connect with anybody that you need help with. Um, we have a, a tremendous team. We are always working on, you know, regulations and advocacy. We're, we're constantly doing what's best for our communities. And, and that's just our, our biggest thing is safety and livability in our communities is our top priority. So don't hesitate to ever reach out. Um, invite us to, to do presentations, invite us to send you information, invite us to your council meetings, um, you know, have us be involved in the early planning processes, um, work with us to share the information within your community. Um, th this is a joint responsibility. This isn't something that's just on the railway companies. This is something that we need to do as an entirety as, of, of society because our work together will save people's lives. Just gonna, there we go. I don't know why I'm cutting that for a second because I don't know why there was a thumbs up motion there, but okay. Um, I'm going to come back in. Janelle, I want to thank you. 
from the bottom of my heart. I know we talked about a lot of statistics and we talked about a lot of things over the last 25, almost half hour now. Um, for those who are listening and those who are watching, the links to the RAC website, the Operation Lifesaver website are in the show notes. If you want, if you need to, please reach out to them because it is a great resource and we need to lower that number, particularly here in Alberta. As a, we are an Alberta show, that numbering of 438 incidences in five years is staggering to my mind. And that does not seem right, and it needs to be fixed. So Janelle, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming on and talking about this important issue. And hopefully people get something and reach out to you and learn a little bit more and figure out how to make their communities a little bit safer around the railways. Thanks for being such a great partner, Chris. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. Now, we hope you've enjoyed today's conversation with one of Canada's municipal stakeholders making a difference within all communities across this great country. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode. Your support helps us to continue to grow and bring you these important conversations like you heard today. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. <music>